okay guys so in this video let's see that what is the token flow inside our application so firstly we see that on the left we have the client and on the right we have the server so when a client makes a request to the server that is he makes a register or login request with his username and password the server checks if the username and password is valid so if it is if it is valid the server will send back a pair of tokens that is the access tokens and the refresh tokens and in the next slide we will come back to this thing here that is why we are providing the client with two access uh, with two tokens that is the access token and refresh tokens but for now just keep this in mind that we are providing back with a pair of access token and refresh token and now to access any protected route the client will send his access token as the authorization header to the server and the server verifies whether the authorization header is valid that is the access token is valid and if the access token is valid the server will send back the response if the token is valid and if the token is not valid the server will send back a 401 forbidden response which means or which has the message that is the JWT is expired and then what the client will do the client will send back the server again a request which contains the refresh token in the request body and then the server verifies that refresh token and if that request refresh token is valid then what the server will do server will again send back the client a pair of access token and a new refresh token not the old refresh token but a new refresh token and if the refresh token is not valid or the refresh token is blacklisted the server will send back http response of 403 that is unauthorized so why do we need two tokens so after a successful authentication, we are sending back two tokens to the client containing the client ID in the payload of the audience claim. So here we are providing two tokens that is the access token and refresh token. The access token will have the validity of a single hour and the refresh token would have a validity of one year or more. So it's typical to keep your refresh tokens validity for so long because they are used to refresh the access tokens. So now we use the access token to access the protected route, but we use the refresh tokens to get a new pair of access token and refresh token when the access token has been expired. And since our access token has a validity of only a single hour, so it can easily expire. So therefore, and the refresh tokens are simply used to get a new pair of access token and refresh token. So the refresh token would be firstly verified that if the refresh token is valid and secondly, it would be checked inside the database that is inside Redis whether this refresh token exists there. So if this refresh token exists there, then only it will send a new pair and after sending a new pair what the server will do it will keep that refresh token that is the new refresh token and it will override the old refresh token so that the old refresh token never existed in the server or it has been overwritten by the new refresh token so so if any new request is made by the old refresh token the server will see that the token is valid but it is not present inside redis so it will again send back a 403 response so here we are making two checks firstly whether the token is valid or not and secondly whether that a token exist in redis or not and to log out of the user we can simply remove the access token and refresh token from the client side as well as we will also remove the refresh token from redis database as well that is from the server so what all npm packages do we need to make this uh, authentication api so we simply need to use these packages that is express mongoose json web token redis joey and this is for a schema validation and then we are going to use bcrypt that uses blowfish algorithm to encrypt your passwords. Then we are going to use .env package to store our environment variables. And this is one of the most important packages of this application that is HTTP errors because since we are going to make our application protection ready, so we should handle errors and we should not only log it inside our console, but rather we should handle errors gracefully and we should send an appropriate response back to the client. And then we are going to use Nodemon which simply restarts the application on save. And then we are going to use Morgan which simply logs the request inside the console. And lastly but not the least, we are not going to use Passport.js because if simply we are using JSON web tokens, then there is no need to use Passport.js because for JWTs, Passport only verifies the JWT and nothing else. It does not, it does not create a new JWT and that all thing is handled by this JSON web token package. And this package that is JSON web token can be used to create a JWT and to verify a JWT. So see you in the next video where we are going to set up our express application.